Today we will be talking about Lesson 80, Reducing Fractions, Part 2, page 587 in your book. Okay, example one. There are four blue marbles and eight white marbles in a bag. If one marble is taken from the bag, what is the probability that the marble selected is white? So we're going to start with probability. If there are eight white marbles, that becomes our numerator, but there are a total of 12 bags in the marble. Eight white plus the four blue. So the probability of getting a white marble is eight twelfths. Now this can be reduced. So I know that both eight and 12 are even, so they can both be divisible by two. So I'm gonna start by reducing by two halves. I divide my numerators, eight divided by two equals four and divide my denominators. 12 divided by two equals six. So I can reduce eight twelfths to four sixths. However, I know because four and six are both even again, that I can reduce a four sixth even further. So I can reduce twice, and I am again going to reduce by two halves Divide my numerators, four divided by two equals two, six divided by two equals three, and I know that two thirds, since they're both prime, cannot be reduced any further. So I reduced once here, and then I reduced again here by taking this number and reducing it again in order to get my full answer. So this was a two-step reduction. Now, instead of doing a two-step reduction like we just did, we can find the greatest common factor of eight and 12 and do it in one step. So my factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. My factors of 12 are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. So my greatest common factor is four. So I'm gonna go back to my fraction, or my probability, eight twelfths, and I'm going to divide by the greatest common factor, four fourths. Because remember, it has to be equivalent to one. So I take four as my greatest common factor because it becomes the numerator and the denominator. And now I divide again. Eight divided by four equals two. 12 divided by four equals three. And there in one step, I have my uh, fraction reduced as low as it can go. Example two. The value of a dime is 40% of the value of a quarter. Write 40% as a reduced fraction. So I know that 40% is equivalent to 40 one-hundredths. And now I know that 10 is a factor of both 40 and 100. So I'm going to divide by 10 tenths. 40 divided by 10 equals 4. 100 divided by 10 equals 10. And I get 4 tenths. But I can reduce 4 tenths even further because they're both even. So if I take 4 tenths, I divide it by 2 halves because I know 2 is a factor of 4 and 10. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Whoa, what just happened? Okay, well that says two fifths. So 40% reduced to the lowest fraction is two fifths. But if I take 40, one hundredths, I know that the greatest common factor 
of 40 and 100 is 20. So I can divide this by 20 twentieths in one step. Though we need to make this a division sign, not an equal sign. So 40 divided by 20 equals 2. 100 divided by 20 equals 5. And there is my answer. Now, 40 and 100 have several common factors. On the last example, I divided by 10. On this one, I divided by 20. You could also divide by 2. You could divide by, well, 2 halves. You could divide by 5 fifths. There are probably a couple of others. You just need to make sure, oh, definitely 4 fourths, that you reduce all the way down until you, your numerator and denominator have no more common factors, okay? If they have common factors, you haven't reduced far enough. Okay, example three, reduce 12 eighteenths. We're gonna reduce it first just by finding common factors. So 12, don't know why it keeps doing that. 12 eighteenths. My greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. So I'll divide by six sixths. 12 divided by six equals two. 18 divided by six equals three. And here I have two thirds. However, they have done this using prime factorization. So let's go look at it using prime factorization. Okay, so here you see the prime factors of 12 and 18. And then below in red, you see the fraction 12 over 18. So we're gonna rewrite each of these as the prime factorization. So the numerator 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3. The denominator, 18, equals 2 times 3 times 3. Now, I can split each of these fractions of the prime factorization into its own little fraction. So I'm just going to draw a little dotted line here to kind of split these into their own little fractions. So here, this first one, right here, I see two halves, and I know that two halves is equivalent to one. So I'm gonna cross both of those and make those actual ones. And then in my next column here, right here, I see two thirds. I'm gonna leave that alone. In my third column over here, I see three-thirds, and I know three-thirds is also equivalent to one. So now I really have one times two times one over one times three times one. Making this fraction, if I multiply these out now, I get an answer. I'm going to move it up here so I have a little more room of two thirds. Now this is not the usual way that people find or reduce a fraction, but I wanted to show it to you because it may ask you in your assignment to solve using fa prime factorization. So if they do, this is the method that you use. Okay, go on to the lesson practice and we will review this on Monday.